Hockey Picks and Bets. I'm your host, DJ Mitchell, here to go over the six-game Friday slate. Uh, I mean, I, I'm happy it's only six because this is going to be a lot to cover and not a lot of time. Uh, obviously, as we always start, rate, review, comment, uh, do whatever you want. Follow us on Twitter, Mayo Media Network. Follow me at DJ underscore Mitchell 94. Follow Jake and, and uh, Cecil. Follow all those guys. Check out what they're doing. They're doing great stuff every day. Um, discord still open for everyone we do a lot of talking in there we've had some huge winners in the morning skate podcast discord we had someone take down the pepper the pe- peppermint penalty killer whatever the heck it was called he took first and second for a cool 130 grand uh, you know big shout out to him uh clay i can't think of his name is in the discord but he you know a great player giving us all his notes you know just right there free just go right in and check him out um we have other members giving a lot of different shot metrics as far as who's shooting on the power play. A big reason why I was so strong on McCann on Thursday. Um, was it the Wednesday? I mean, uh, because it, he's taking all his shots on the power play with all these guys out um, for Seattle, but Gord and others. So I'm like, all right, this guy's shooting 35% of the power play. Let's jam him in at two. And it paid off nicely. I think a lot of people were in on that prop. So we'll move forward though, to this slate. We have six games. A lot of COVID news. I mean, just an astronomical amount. Um, but we have Vegas at the Rangers to start things off. Big question mark for the Rangers is, will Artemi Panarin play? Now, that one is what killed me on, on Wednesday. Uh, I had his prop over two and a half. I, I wanted Zvinijet. I just wasn't offered where I could take it. I like those two a good, good bit against Arizona. Uh, Panarin was even better as, better as a value than Zvinijet's. It was only like minus 115. And I really liked it a lot. So... I thought, you know what? I'm going to grab it. Uh, Panarin goes out there. He has two shots in the first like five minutes and then gets injured. Uh, we still don't know for sure he's day to day right now. So what does that mean for the Rangers? Uh, well, what did they do in the last game after he went out? Again, it was versus Arizona. So the, the big news is that Kako went up to the top power play. He took the spot and he scored. So we're really going to be expecting that to happen again. I can't imagine they're going to take him off, even though it was Arizona, which is an asterisk next to any win. They did come back and get the win after he went out. Um, they gave huge minutes to Kako. He had the most five-on-five five minutes, just about tied with Lafreniere, surprisingly. Uh, Lafreniere got a bit more of a boost. He moved up with Strom. So Lafreniere took his spot at five-on-five. Five. Kako already on the top line. Um, he scored, he scored a five on five. Zabinajad scored in the power play. I mixed that up, but irregardless, Kako, Zabinajad, Kreider top line with um, Strom and Lafreniere as a second. Now they're playing Vegas. Uh, Vegas is a team that I really, really, really like here. They're modeling to be the second best expected goals on the slate over the past 10. And it's really because of Max Pacioretty. He's been an absolute world beater. It's hard to ignore a guy like Pacioretty, even though it's a back to back. It's a, you know, it's a quick turnaround, um, but it's right down the road. They're going from the New Jersey to the Rangers. I still like it just fine. It is hard for me to, uh, so one thing I'm going to say, if you're playing DFS, a rule that I will use every time, if you're playing Mark Stone, you have to have patch ready. There is no way. And I say this with obviously a caveat of it could happen, but there's almost no way that Mark Stone gets there in DFS without Pacioretty being the beneficiary. He is not a rate shooter. Mark Stone is very unlikely to hit your two to three shot on goal and incredibly unlikely to hit a five shot bonus. So if you are playing him, Mark Stone, that is, you're playing it with Pacioretty. Now, Pacioretty has not gone below. Send this again, going back to when he returned from injury, he has a one game that was below 10 DraftKings points multiple over 30 and he shoots better than anyone in the league in the month of December as far as shots for 60 on net um I don't think he's leading an Icorsi for 60 I think he is third yep third to Ellers and Ovechkin so an incredibly elite company I think it's one of the better stocks of the night okay Panarin coming out makes the Rangers an even worse defensive team than they already were and they've been bad uh, on the season they're potentially going to be back with Shesterkin we also don't know that 
So minus 125 right now for Vegas. I'm hammering that line. I don't care if it's a back-to-back. Vegas is way too good for that line to be out there. The Rangers are missing one of their best players. And I know they've been good, but Vegas is giving them way too, well, Vegas being the books, if you will, are giving them way too much respect. Uh, I'm taking that all day. Vegas back-to-back, who cares? Whatever. They're going to win this game. It's it's December, okay? Uh, Vegas is finally getting kind of healthy again. We have Carlson returns. The boys are back. This is one of the best teams in the league. I'm not overlooking it. Um, I think that as far as DFS in this game, again, stacking around patch ready, really, really wise. I don't see myself going to the cheaper line two of um, Carlson, Marcheseau, and Smith. I think some people will be in on it. It's not going to be for me. I think that this game overall is Vegas or bust, and that's going to be it for me. So we should see Brassois in net. Gives the Rangers a little bit more of a boost, but he's not terrible. So the props in this game, it's going to be hard for me to find. Zabinijet at two and a half, though. I still think that's really strong. And then Kako, anytime point, anytime goal. I think those are still really good because I still think there'll be some goals on the other side. I think the Rangers will score. And for that reason, I also think the over-under, the over is in play here. But anytime you're on a back-to-back, it is tough for me to really sink my teeth into it. It's a six right now. I kind of think it'll get to a five and a half. Um, we'll see. It's plus money on the over right now. So yeah, I think it'll get to five and a half. And if it's five and a half, I, I kind of like that over. Okay. But I'm not overly bullish on it. I'm way more in on the Vegas side. Just take the Vegas side and move on. The next game is the Sabres at the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, ah, yeah, Sabres are finally showing they're bad and then they go out and they, you know, they get a win. Um, Uko Pekalukinen is starting on Thursday which means he will not be starting on Friday. It would have been his like sixth game in a row. Um, again, Uko Pekaluka has been amazing. He should have more than one win. He had he saved, bailed the Sabres out against Winnipeg numerous times. He bailed them out against Washington numerous times. He's not going to be there to bail them out on Friday night. It's going to be Malcolm Subban, who gave up six goals on 25 shots before getting injured against Carolina and subsequently pulled from the game. Is Malcolm Subban the worst goalie in the world. No, but he's not great. It's very unlikely that he gets it done here on a back-to-back with the Sabres going into Pittsburgh, who in their own right are banged up. Um, but I do think Pittsburgh projects real well here. They're fourth, I think, in my expected, in the, well, not my expected goals, Matt's expected goals model. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I do think that there's reason to get in on Pittsburgh. They had lines of Rodriguez, Crosby, Kapanen, Zucker, Carter and Heinen. They won their last game over Montreal. They were a heavy, 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 heavy favorite, like almost to the point where I thought, like, could you consider Montreal here? But I could not. Um, the first power play was Carter, Crosby, Latang, Rodriguez, and Zucker. Rodriguez and Crosby had 22 minutes. That's really easily where you want to stack, I think. Um, Crosby's been shooting a, a good bit more so, um, with all these injuries going on right now. He is a good bit expensive, but I do think there's value on this slate. So I do think it's playable at 8,100. I don't know if it's unbelievable, but I do like his shot prop fine. He could disappear, but Kapanen doesn't really seem like a great rate shooter. He's he's done it before. I'm not saying it's not something that he has the ability to do. He's a good piece to put with Crosby, but on the year, I don't think he has a single game over. I don't think he has a single five shot on goal game. A lot of, you know, zeros, ones, twos, and threes are in the mix for over his last 10 or 15 just not a good rate shooter. So I do think that Erod's uh, the easiest player to stack with Crosby. I do think players are, uh, the, the teams are kind of keying in on um, Rodriguez a little bit more. He had that 12 shot game uh, the, the first time they played Montreal in the past 10. And then the second one, we had the one that did go in the net though. I think that Erod and Crosby are a great, great, great stack. Uh, it's a good two man. It's a six game slate. You might want to get third in there. Cap it and make sense. I could even consider the Jeff Carter train here to stack with it i think it's a, a it, it, this is worthy of a four-man stack on a six-game slate with carter zucker um erod and crosby i think that's totally fine and justifiable here um i don't have much interest on the sabers at all i think that some of our you know gpp high rollers will get in on the sabers just because of how low owned they're going to be um pittsburgh's been i would say average to good defensively uh there's really no perfect I, they're a tough team. They, they just had so much, so many changes. It's really hard to hone in on exactly what this team is. Uh, Buffalo does not project well. They're fourth to last in expected goals on this slate. I think there won't be a ton of pace on a back-to-back. So I don't really like anything. 
we've kind of gotten to the point now where Skinner and, and Thompson are priced correctly on their shot prop, where I don't know if I like the variance enough to take them at like minus 130 on a back to back. So I'm pretty much out on them. This the Pittsburgh minus two, oh my god, minus 320 is real rich for my blood. I doubt I take it myself. I'd rather just take the over. I think just thinking that Buffalo gives up enough goals that they, you know, it, it finds its way. The only caveat is Tristan Jari has been really, really freaking good. I think we've quietly been one of the best goalies in the entire NHL. So five and a half seems fair. I like it more than just taking the money line for no reason. Um, I just think that Buffalo is going to give up a ton of goals. They're, they also lost Robert Haig, who is a good defender, and now he's out long term. Um, yeah, so I, I think in this matchup, it's the expected goals are telling me Pittsburgh should score a lot. Buffalo, if they could find one or two, it gets over. If they can't find that one or two, you know, it's to no fault of your own that you took it. Getting to the third game, we have Dallas at St. Louis. Now, this game projects bad. Uh, right, Both teams are kind of right in the middle of the pack as far as expected goals. The pace doesn't feel good. I've been fading Dallas games other than a little bit of Robertson um, and Rube Hintz went healthy uh but it's it's you know i'm going to continue to do it here i don't have a ton of interest in this game in general um the top lines are sod o'reilly brown boost nevich barbashev tarasenko it just kind of doesn't scream value to me i i think that top line is it's again like there's value to them in dfs there's not a lot of value to this game having a lot of easy to uh i guess predict shot metrics i think tarasenko is in a good spot but they'll get up in games and they'll just sit him. It's very, very tough to get in on um, on any of these St. Louis props because of how much they change when they're winning or losing. The Dallas side, it, Rube Hintz should be back. He was on the first line in practice with Robertson and Pavelski. You know, I, I don't know what the props are going to be right now. I like Rube Hintz at two and a half. He wasn't hitting uh, before the injury. I, and in the injury, you know, it's, let me look here actually. So he's expected to play. Yeah, he had missed yeah, he had missed three of his previous four prop nights um, at two and a half. So I think it'll be priced pretty right down the middle around, you know, it could even be plus money. I, and I'd take that all day. Like, he's a really, really talented player. Um, I need to look more into this injury. Honestly, I didn't think it was anything that should. It was in, oh yeah, it was an illness. All right, I already found it real quick. So it shouldn't be something like a wrist injury where you're worried about him shooting. It's just an illness. It wasn't COVID related. He should be back to full go. I I see why you take his prop. I don't see how you could play him at 7K on DraftKings. I don't think that it's worth stacking this line that some people might go back to here on the road in St. Louis with Bennington being back in. This game's a fade in DFS for me. It's an under bet for me, for sure. And, you know, I mean, I God, I hate both sides. I, I would... I would, I'll, I'll give myself the minus 130 at St. Louis on, on record. I'll say it out of my mouth. I do think Bennington being back, this team is good defensively, but the under is just the better bet. Uh, it's just, it doesn't really even, it's not even a question to me. I think the under is real, real strong. Uh, if you get even adequate goaltending, it should hit. We're going to move forward to Washington at Winnipeg. This game, I, I really do like a lot. I think that this one, the six is very justifiable. The over is very justifiable. Um, you know, there is a reason to think like, well, Hellebuck's regression should kind of come back. He's at a 9.15 right now. And I feel like that's not, you know, it's better than I, I thought when I actually looked it up today because I thought he'd been pretty bad. I mean, after losing to Buffalo, maybe that taste was just in my mouth. But yeah, I think there's some positive regression in his future. With that being said, I still think Washington projects to be one of the best on the slate. Now, my thing is, can I get Pittsburgh and Washington together? It's not easy. You're going to end up losing any chance at patch ready if that's the case, which on a back-to-back, -back, it might be uh, doable. I think that this Washington side is really strong. 9,600 Ovechkin is hard to pass up. He has 16 shots on goal in his past two games. A 10 spot against uh, against Chicago. I couldn't find his props on the books I get right now. Come on, New York, please legalize it very soon. But he was in a smash spot against Chicago, and he hit. I think he's in another really good spot that's under the radar here against Winnipeg. They project to be one of the best expected goals on the slate. Actually, I believe they are number uh, they are number one in, in, in expected goals on the slate by a decent margin. The pace, I think, will be there. Winnipeg, I think, has a chance to score on, on the other side. So, I, like I said, love the over. 
I would be hard pressed not to take Washington at minus 115. I think they're the better team here. I don't know if I'm going to bet it myself, but rather take the over. I'd rather just get some props out of this game. Uh, Ehlers and Ovechkin, those are kind of the easiest two. Um, Washington doesn't do an extreme amount of line matching. They're also, uh, they did return Nicholas Backstrom, which is, is great for them and great for Ovechkin and his props. Um, so, yeah, I think that the easiest way to go about this game is to jam Ovi in DFS, is to get a, a correlating piece. Like I said, easiest way to do that is probably Backstrom. Um, Tom Wilson is closer to returning, but not back. It was Ovechkin with, Ehlers, he played with Eller, I mean, Eel, not Eller, Eller and Backstrom during the game. They have him as with Eller at five on five and Sprong, um, but they mix match that line, that lineup a lot. I don't think they ran a practice though. So I don't think we have any new lines for them as of now. We should get them tomorrow. Um, yeah, nothing new for them as of now. I think Backstrom will be with Ovechkin at five on five. I'd be pretty shocked if he wasn't. So I, I think that you can find a good correlation and really where your value comes from is a guy like Shiri. If he's at five on five, he's on the power play with Ovechkin. You could even just do that. Just say whatever Ovechkin scores on the power play, Shiri gets an assist. He had a goal too out there. I mean, he's a good player. Like that's where you find the value. And that's why like Pittsburgh and Washington make sense. Cause even those high price players, you can find the value to correlate with it to get yourself in a really good spot in GPP. Uh, I don't know if there's any other player on the Washington side that I think is like, much better um, as a prop. I think that Washington's a good team. I think they'll find some goals. And I think on the other side, uh, you know, as I already hinted to, I love Ehlers here. Ehlers got, but the whole other lineup got completely blown up. So Ehlers is now with Shifley and Stastny. Stastny's not a great rate shooter. Shifley can be, he's hit or miss, but Ehlers is the guy. As I think I alluded to in the month of December, Ehlers has the highest I seed for 60. To put that into very simple terms, he is shooting the puck towards the net more than any player in the league minutes adjusted. So yeah, he hasn't seen the type of minutes Ovechkin has. So Ovechkin has more shot attempts in general as far as counts, but they're putting him on the top line. So we should see those minutes. I mean, it seems like such an easy bet. You're going to find him at two and a half. You might even find him at two on some books. I've seen it before and it blows my mind. So this is an absolute you know, me, I lock of the night or your, uh, what do they say? Super lock, uh, Nikolai Ehlers, two and a half. I'm going to have it. I'm sure it'll be near even money. I love it here. I love that line. And I think it's so easy to one off it as a bring back in this game. You just take Ovi and whatever center it goes with it. Maybe even Carlson, Carlson's super expensive. And you just bring it back with Ehlers at 5,900. It just feels really easy to do here on this slate. I love his prop favorite of the night. I love the over. Not sure if I'm going to bet either side. Uh, so we'll move forward to the, the, the question mark game of the night. Nashville at Chicago. I'm going to refresh the page one last time to see if we got lines. Here we go. No, they're not giving us lines uh, for this game. Still, Nashville is a mess. I don't know what's going to happen with that game. Nashville has a ton of players out with COVID. They didn't run a practice today. More players got um, taken off, the uh, put on the list. It's a mess. Um, I, you know... <laughs> It's one of those things where it's really hard for me to play this game because with all these players coming out and then calling up all these, these younger, you know, minors type players, taxi squad type, potentially they, they might go back to a taxi squad, the NHL type guys is, it, you know, without any sort of real practice run, these players don't have a feel for each other. That really sets up well for this game to be an under bet. And unless it goaltending just absolutely craps the bed here, which could happen, I just think the under is a really, really strong take here. Um, Chicago is a tough under bet to want. Um, like I said, we don't have a line on this right now. If it comes in at six, it's really easy for me to bet the under. If it comes in at five and a half, I still like the under. I, I don't know if, if I could possibly talk myself into the over, and I don't know if I could talk myself into playing this in DFS because, yeah, we're going to have Forsberg. We're going to have Kane. We're going to have to bring it, and I like their shot props because they're going to get uh, bigger minutes, but I don't like this game to have a lot of goals with a bunch of players out there that are not NHL quality players. So just give me the under here. Um, give me the Chicago side. They're not as banged up with COVID. And yeah, I mean, I, I would take any of the, you know, Philippe Forsberg's been a, a decent bet. They're on a back-to-back -back here. 
So we'll see. Uh, I, I, I probably wait till tomorrow, look at the props, say maybe to bring it, maybe Patrick Kane, depending on what they are, because to bring it two and a half, if it's minus like 160, I'm not touching it. Just, just now, nah. if it's minus 130, yeah, maybe, maybe minus 120, 130 range. I'm okay with it. Um, there's a lot of goal props that could end up coming into the mix here. If we get like a plus 400 Kurash, if we get like a, um, you know, again, I, I, I like that prop on um, Wednesday. So if we get something like that, even a Kuba leak, I've seen him um, kind of in, in, a, in a decent range. He's a decent rate shooter. Those ones I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at. But other than that, this game is kind of a meh, uh, not that interested in this game in general. Uh, Chicago did get the win in overtime against Washington that had a nine goal uh, spot. They had some goals coming from the different guys, but Strom, Debrinkit Kane, as I mentioned on the uh, – Rest in peace Monday slate or Monday podcast that, that never do to be listened to. I liked Dylan Strom with that line and it would have worked out well. He was, uh, he mixed in a bull power plays and he was with Kane and Debrinkit. So he's a nice piece. If you're going to go with that full line stack against a back to back banged up Nashville squad, it's justifiable, but I'm not probably going to have it. Final game of the night Arizona, yikes, at Anaheim. So, boy, um, for starters, I'm, I'm sorry uh, to any anyone out there listening that might be an Arizona Coyotes fan because it's been rough. It's been a rough year. It's been a rough, really, life. And, and I know better than anyone, I, I'm wearing my Sabres jersey right now. Okay? Obviously, Anaheim's a great take at minus 260 at home. It probably should be higher than that. It might get higher than that. It's what? Yeah, five and a half over under. Yeah, I mean, I've been taking the unders on almost every Arizona game. Their goaltending has been just good enough to get it done almost every time. It, 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 there's just a, a printing press of money when you take the under. I don't know if teams feel bad for them or, or what's going on, but they seem to really like allowing these unders to hit. I'm, I'm probably going to take the under again. I do think Anaheim is good enough to, to score enough goals to, to get it done. A lot of young players. Yeah, I mean, give me, give me obviously Anaheim, <laughs> easy, and give me the under, uh, as I've been taking almost every night. Is there any prop I'm individually stoked about? I took Raquel on, on Wednesday, or wait, was it Wednesday? And he had like, like six shot attempts and two on net. I don't know, just, I don't know, it's not worth it. Just don't do it. Honestly, this game is, is so boring. It's such an easy fade for me. I have no interest in it. I, I think that you just take the under, you don't play it in DraftKings and you move on with your night. I, I could talk myself into Milano, Raquel, and Zegras, but it is really expensive. I mean, you're spending money that you could spend on way better players in better spots. I don't see why you do it. Will people talk to yourself in the Troy Terry? Sure. He, he's back on scoring goals again, three in his last two. I don't know. I'm not going to do it. He had 14 minutes of ice time last time out. Nah, no, thank you. I mean, it was a four to one win. So they sat him because they don't need him defensively. I think that happens again. I, I see no point in, in doing this to yourself. Um, you know, they played, like I said, those, let, let's look at the last game, right? Um, for Anaheim, as like I said, they kind of steamrolled Seattle. Uh, four to one, they got up really early and they just held on all game. Raquel got a ton of minutes. Raquel's a good defensive player because of his speed and whatever. Uh, Getzlav had big minutes. Bolano. Um, Zegers had you know 16, but they spread the wealth pretty pretty well at five on five. So you're really betting on Arizona taking penalties that I just don't really think they're going to be competitive enough to to take. But they they might they they've taken penalties. So yeah, fade this game. Raquel shot prop is okay. That's all I got. I don't touch Arizona. Don't ask. Um, and that's probably going to do it for this slate. I probably went on too long. A lot of like I said, a lot of COVID stuff that could still happen. Uh, we don't know. Honestly, kind of interestingly enough, I went into this thing like, oh boy, ton of problems. Really not that many huge issues on this slate. There's a ton on Thursday. So I am going to let you go on that note. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your winnings. Enjoy your holiday. I'll talk to you on Monday. Um, yeah, and uh, definitely your rate, review, all that stuff. Give me a follow if you want to get in the Discord and talk more DFS. If you want to check out the Morning Skate podcast and listen to more DFS on Tuesday, Thursdays, we're always recording. Um, and then, yeah, uh, other than that, thank you again for listening, and we will talk to you soon. Awesome.